Dear grade 12 students, welcome to a new English session which will be devoted to consolidating the grammar points of Unit 7 and 8. So let's get started. Today's lesson has three learning objectives. First, consolidate changing from the active to the passive. Second, consolidate using modal verbs to respond to situations. And third, consolidate using the present simple tense. Now let's start with the first grammar point, the passive voice. Look at this sentence. Is it active or passive? Very good, it's an active sentence. How do you know that? Very good, the agent or the doer appears in the beginning of the sentence. Very good. Now what about this one? Excellent, it's a passive sentence. Normally we use the passive if the doer is not known or the action is more important than the doer. Now let's see how we change an active sentence into the passive. The active sentence should have three parts, the subject, the verb, and the object. So the first step, you take the object and you move it to the beginning of the sentence. Then you take the verb and you write it in the past participle. Then you need to write the verb to be, which will be in the same tense as the active sentence. Our active sentence here is in the present simple, so we are going to write it, ah. Please pause the video here and examine this chart carefully. It explains how the tenses change in the passive voice. The chart is found in your student's book, page GR20. Now let's do some practice. Pause the video here, read the question and choose the correct passive form. Very good. Which sentence is the correct one? Excellent. The first sentence. Now let's practice changing sentences into the passive. So we start with sentence A. Please pause the video, read it and change it to the passive. And remember to follow the steps we have seen previously. Very good. What's your answer? Excellent. A new bridge will be built. Great. Now, sentence B. Pause the video again and change it to the passive. Very good. What's your answer? Great. Their hands were washed with soapy water. Very good. Now we will see how to write a bracketed verb in the correct passive form. Let's take this example. You have the verb deliver to write in the passive voice. So the first step is write the verb in the past participle. Very good. Then you need to look for a time expression in the sentence to help you decide on the tense of verb to be. Can you see this time expression? Very good, tomorrow morning. So, which tense are you going to use? Very good, future passive. So, we will write here, will be, very good. Now, let's take this example. Pause the video and read the sentence and write the verb built in the correct passive tense. Very good. Yes, so the first step, we write the past participle of the verb. Then the time expression here is thousands of years ago, which means we will use the past simple passive. Excellent. Yes, so we write was. Now we will see how to change questions into the passive. First, here is an example. Will you complete the task by Friday evening? So the first step is answering this question. Let's take an answer with yes. Yes, I will complete the task by Friday evening. The next step, you change it into the passive following the steps we have seen previously in this lesson. So you will get 
the task will be completed by Friday evening. And the last step is uh, changing this statement into a question again. And for our example here, we are going to move will to the beginning of the question. And uh, here we finish changing it into the passive. Now, here is a question for you. Please pause the video and change it into the passive following the steps we have just seen. Very good. What did you get as an answer? Great. Were the candles bought yesterday? Well done. Now we will see impersonal and personal passive. It is used with verbs like believe, know, report, think, say, expect, and so on. So let's take this example. What is the personal passive of the sentence? Good. He is said to have been a brilliant artist and use have been instead of was. Very good. What about the impersonal passive? Good. It is said that he was a brilliant artist. Now, your turn. Here is your sentence. Please pause the video here and write the personal passive. Very good. What's your answer? Great. He is said to have lied in the cold. Now pause the video again and write the impersonal passive. Great. What's your answer? It is said that he lied in the cold. Great. The second grammar point of today's lesson is modal verbs and we are going to see the functions of these modal verbs let's start with the first sentence you have should what is the function of should here excellent advice for number two the function of can in this sentence is great ability and for number three may in a question form very good asking for permission now, for number four, you have can't. What is the function of can't in this sentence? Very good. Prohibition. Number four, you have don't have to. What's the function of this model verb? Excellent. Absence of necessity. And the last model verb is shall. Very good. Suggestion. Great. Now let's practice. Please pause the video here, read the three sentences, and rewrite them using the modal verbs between brackets. Very good. Now for sentence A. Good. You don't have to wear former attire for the ceremony. Now what about sentence B? Excellent. Your place prohibited by mustn't. You mustn't use your camera in the museum. And for the last sentence. Very good. The mother might have gone out to do the shopping. Great. Now the last grammar point, the present simple tense. We are going to see the form and we will take play as an example. We start with the affirmative form. For the first group of pronouns, the verb takes an S. For the second group of pronouns, the verb remains as it is. As for the negative form, for the first group of pronouns, we use the auxiliary verb doesn't plus verb. And for the second group of pronouns, we, take, we use a don't plus verb. Now we are going to see the use of the present simple tense. For the first use, we use it for generalizations, which means uh, talking about certain group as a whole. The second use is timetables and schedules, which means uh, speaking about events uh, that are planned by a service or a business. The third one is a specificity, which means uh, talking about something that happens at a specific time. And number four, conditionals, which means uh, things that are true if something is done. Now, please pause the video here and write the bracketed verbs in the correct present simple tense. Great. Now, for the first sentence, what is your answer? 
the girls don't enjoy. Great. For number two, the football match starts. The verb takes an S. For number three, they travel. Very good. And for number four, if he doesn't answer. Very good. This is the end of this lesson. Thank you very much for watching. And remember to do the homework on Microsoft Teams within 24 hours.